Heard all across the United States, Canada, and around the world, this is the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Hank Hanegraaff. Hank is president of the Christian Research Institute. At CRI, our desire is to equip you not only to defend the historic Christian faith, but to become a winsome witness to a spiritually hungry but skeptical world, because life and truth matter. To learn more or to find resources to help you grow in grace, go to equip.org. To ask Hank a question on air, call 888-ASK-HANK. That's 888-275-4265. And now, here's Hank Hanegraaff. Again, the number to dial to get your questions answered today regarding Muslim, the world's fastest growing religion. Uh, you can dial triple eight ask Hank numerically triple eight two seven five forty two sixty five. Of course, you can call on any other topic as well, whatever's on your heart or mind. Questions, comments, simply dial triple eight ask Hank numerically triple eight two seven five forty two sixty five. The reason I wrote the book Muslim: What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest Growing Religion is that despite its incoherence, the Muslim cult, and by the way, it is a cult, it's a cult of Arabian paganism, of Judaism, and Christianity, and a muddy mixture of all of those at best. But this cult, one billion, six hundred million strong and growing, is poised to fill the vacuum left by a Western culture that is slouching inexorably towards Gomorrah. Demographics are alarming. While polygamous Muslims boast a robust birth rate, native Westerners are moving rapidly towards self-extinction. Filling that void are multiplied millions of Muslims who have little or no intention of assimilating into Western culture. And equally grave is the specter of global Islamic jihadism. That's calling it like it is. A global Islamic jihadism network that is now exacting mass genocide on Christians in the East and ever multiplying terrorist attacks throughout the West. Just before I went on air, I did an interview with the Associated Press. And during that television interview, I wore, I wore a button And that button has the 14th letter, the 14th letter of the Arabic alphabet on it. And we're going to be making that available to people that listen to the broadcast in the very near future because I want you to wear it too. The reason I wear it, as I explained to the AP reporter, is that I stand in solidarity with Christians who are facing mass genocide in the Middle East, which is squarely in the blind spot of the West. So this symbol, the 14th letter of the Arabic alphabet, uh, we, we, we use the word noon, that's how you pronounce it, to describe this letter. This has been scrawled on churches and homes of Christians throughout the Middle East as they've been taken by Muslims. And it's not just ISIS. Other people have been plundering the homes of Christians as well. And so I wear this, although it is used as a term of derision by Muslims against Christians who serve the Nazarene, Jesus Christ, I wear it in that I am standing in solidarity with my brothers and sisters in Christ 
who are being maimed and murdered. And most of them I will not see this side of eternity, but I will see them in eternity. What more can I say? We are witnessing the co-belligerency of fantastically wealthy Saudis. They're spending billions of dollars exporting virulent Wahhabism to the West. We think about ISIS or ISIL or Daesh or whatever you want to call it, Daesh. Uh, The fact of the matter is, we have an alliance because we're addicted to the alliance's oil. We have an alliance with Saudi Arabia, the very country that is exporting something equally as bad or perhaps worse than ISIL itself. Exporting this virulent form of Saudi Sunni Christianity, (laughs) Sunni Islam, uh, to the West. And we're still Western governments, academic institutions, media outlets, they're bent on exporting a false narrative, a false narrative respecting the religious animus that is animating global Islamic jihadism. And I hope when you hear the monikers that are used on television, you will insert these words, at least mentally in your mind, for what's really going on. The best moniker to use is not radical Islam. It's global Islamic jihadism. That, of course, serves to recapitulate a problem, but what begs our attention are solutions. Some might suppose that the solution lies in an aggressive use of Western military power. Now, that is wholly necessary in some cases, just as World War II was wholly necessary. But it is not sufficient. Sebastian Gorka, who was part of the Trump administration until... I guess he couldn't stand any more of the political correctness going on in this regard. He wisely noted that you cannot win a war if you cannot talk honestly about your enemy. And I should also say that the problem is not ultimately fixed either at the ballot box. Because as with military might, political activism, it plays a necessary yet insufficient role. The despotism of militant egalitarianism, radical individualism, Multiculturalism, political correctness, religious pluralism are not magically redeemed by political victories. That ought to be pretty clear to us by now. Even during the Reagan Revolution, illiberal liberalism, I love that moniker because it shows just what we have to deal with, an oxymoron illiberal or illiberal liberalism continued even during the Reagan years to hold sway in the educational, the entertainment, the environmental industries, the very industries that create, manipulate, and disseminate ideological constructs that are driving Western civilization in a very very dangerous direction. So again, that's why I wrote the book, Islam, What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest-Growing Religion. 
or I should say Muslim, because I'm actually using the acronym Muslim so that you can remember or get your arms around what Islam is all about. The only real solution to a disintegrating West, to a resurgent Islam, is what the prophetic pen of Oz Guinness wisely designated Renaissance. In other words, it's the power of the gospel, however dark the times. The challenge, said Guinness, is to shake ourselves free from the natural despondency of those who look only at circumstances and at the statistics of decline and gloom. As Christians, we do well to realize that the West has been won twice before, and now it appears that the West has almost been lost a second time. So now, partly in response to the courageous faith of those who achieved it twice before, but more in response to the Great Commission itself, it is time, it is high time to set our minds and hearts to win back the West to our Lord again. Again, this is why I wrote Muslim, what you need to know about the world's fastest growing religion. There are a lot of ways in which you can attain this book. You can get a copy, uh, a, a copy that is personalized. You can get a copy that is autographed. You can get a uh, what do you call them? You can get a uh, an audio book. And do remember, for those who join CRI's monthly support team, I'd be more than pleased to personalize a copy of Muslim, what you need to know about the world's fastest growing religion to you, a family member or a friend. Now, I've been talking about this for several days because yesterday and today, the first two days, I actually have the hard copy in my hands. Uh, unbeknownst to us, we, um, we got the copy a few days before September 11th. Uh, That was the date that the copies were slated to come into the Christian Research Institute. So we were already sending out copies of Muslim, what you need to know about the world's fastest growing religion, to those who are constituents, supporters of the ministry of the Christian Research Institute. Again, this book, all this month, available for those who support the ministry. This was a book that I thought maybe I would write in a year's time. But with all the primary research that I had to do on this particular book, it took me a lot longer than that. And really, as I've said this, and it's a, uh, it's, it's a known adage within the circle of writers, either the writer struggles or the reader struggles. And I wanted to be certain that the struggle was all mine. So what I've attempted in this book to do is take the complex, make it, well, make it readable, understandable, and transferable. And even more than that, make it memorable. Because this problem is not going to go away. You know, we have prophets in the Christian church that are making all kinds of predictions, and they're 100% wrong 100% of the time. I have no fear whatsoever of making this prediction. There will be more terrorist attacks. And what we have seen happen as a result of migration without assimilation in the EU countries is not going to stop. It's only going to grow. And it's only going to get to a point of reaching critical mass. And then when it does those countries that become Islamic demographically will become Islamic politically as well. And then we'll have a real juggernaut on our hands. Many people in the liberal community believe that this somehow or other is good because what's happening is Christianity is being unseated. Now, why do they think that's good? Because they bought into a narrative 
that makes Christianity the boogeyman. Christianity the blight on history's landscape. And this is a revision of history. Historical revisionism. Christianity is what made the West great. For years I've talked on the show and given documentation for how we wouldn't even have science in the West were it not for Christian presuppositions. Again, Muslim, what you need to know about the world's fastest growing religion, available for those who check it out on the web at equip.org or write me at box 8500 Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. For those who call our resource consultants, 888-7000 and the letter CRI. Do remember the number to dial to get your questions answered live on today's show, 888-ASK-HANK. We'll be right back with more. For all the debate over Islam and its growing presence in the world, one thing is often overlooked. Islam is not a religion in the sanitized Western sense. It is, in contrast, an all-encompassing socio-political legal matrix that has bred a worldview antagonistic to anything but itself. While there may be millions of peaceful and tolerant Muslims, many of them are neighbors, Islam itself is hardly peaceful and tolerant. Read Hank Hanegraaff's new book, Muslim, What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest Growing Religion. To receive your copy as our appreciation for your financial partnership, simply call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support CRI's many outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit equip.org. We'll be back in just a moment with more from Hank Hanegraaff. Dr. Eben Alexander's wildly popular near-death experience book, Proof of Heaven, assures us that no matter what we do in this life, only unconditional love and joy await us in the world to come. But our Lord warned that while the gate to hell is wide, the road to it broad, and those who enter through it are many, the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Your generous support lets Hank Hanegraaff and CRI speak out against the lies that lead to hell. In appreciation for your gift today, we'll rush you Hank's book, Afterlife, what you need to know about heaven, the hereafter, and near-death experiences, filled with answers to your questions about life after death. Call 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org now. Again, that's equip.org. The Christian Research Journal is CRI's award-winning magazine, combining eye-catching design with well-researched articles to equip believers in doctrine, defense, and discernment. Here's what's in the latest issue of the Christian Research Journal. Recent scholarly research has been significantly more open toward Jesus' healing the sick, his empty tomb, and even his post-resurrection appearances. So why have these same critics not fallen to their knees and proclaimed, My Lord and my God? Other topics include the Jewish Talmud and its use for Christian apologetics, Jean-Paul Sartre and the resurgence of existentialism, defending the biblical view of human sexuality using an effective Socratic question approach, and much more. Start your subscription to the Christian Research Journal today by calling 888-7000-CRI, 888-7000-CRI, or subscribe online at equip.org. From the outside, Houston preacher Joel Osteen is charming, attractive, and his teaching, well, it makes you feel good. But the truth is, Osteen preaches a seductive and highly dangerous form of Christianity that's leading millions of people astray. That's why Hank Hanegraaff has written a book called The Osteenification of American Christianity. And it's why you must get your own copy today. You must be able to defend yourself with truth about what Joel Osteen really teaches. And this important resource arms you with everything you need to do so. Please call today and request your copy of The Osteenification of American Christianity, 888-7000-CRI. It's our gift to thank you for your donation to support the Christian Research Institute and this Bible Answer Man broadcast. Call 888-7000-CRI. 
or go online to equip.org. While legions of the theologically clueless and politically correct fall over themselves in their rush to paint a warmer and kinder picture of Islam, you might well be wondering, what's really the truth? Hank Hanegraaff clearly answers the question in his new book, Muslim, What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest Growing Religion. To receive the book, Muslim, as our thank you for your gift today, simply call 888-7000-CRI. And make a gift to support CRI's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit equip.org. Now back to the Bible Answer Man broadcast with your host, Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you very much, Randy. And uh, as I've said many times in the broadcast, engagement is our DNA. We exist to equip Christians, and that's never going to change. But things do change from a technological standpoint, and I find that very exciting. On the new podcast, Hank Unplugged, we've taken you out of the studio and into the study for conversations with some of the brightest minds around. We've added a fresh way to interact with through Facebook Live, and today we're unveiling a new way to engage with us. This new way is a new mobile engagement platform that brings everything Sierra has to offer directly to your fingertips. Mobile engagement is the way to ensure that every Christian is equipped to always be ready to give an answer, a reason for the hope that lies within them with gentleness and with respect. One example is the seamless ability to receive the equipping resources that we provide each and every month, and that instantaneously. Here's sort of how it works. To help equip fellow believers through the ongoing work of the Christian Research Institute, or CRI, simply text TRUTH. And when you do so, do it in all caps, all capital letters. So text TRUTH in all caps, to 41444. Again, that's 41444. To help impact lives and receive my new blockbuster book, Text Muslim. Again, all capital letters. Text Muslim in caps to 41444. Four one three fours, four one four four four, and to make a difference on a regular basis through monthly or quarterly support, text standing. Again, in all caps, to nine one nine nine nine. Again, to make a difference on a regular basis through monthly or quarterly support, text standing. In all caps. To 91999. Once again, we exist to equip God's people to always be ready to give an answer, to be biblically literate, and to be able to counter cults and world religions. And all of this is made possible through the generosity of God's people and foremost, the grace of God Himself. This mobile venture is a new and very modern way for us to engage fellow believers and continue to transform lives for Christ. For those unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, more information to come, or you can find more information on the web at equip.org. All this month, we are featuring Muslim, what you need to know about the world's fastest growing religion, the book available in hardback, in audiobook, autographed, personalized, and for those who join CRI's monthly support team, be pleased to personalize a copy to you, a family member, or a friend. I want to uh, take a Facebook question uh, to start off. 
uh, the question and answers today. Again, the number to dial, triple eight, ask Hank. It's from Paula on Facebook. And uh, she's asking a question about another book that I wrote, Has God Spoken? And Paula says, it's hard to put down. It's well written. But I am confused after reading uh, the section on the archaeologist spade. Spade there in the book, if you've ever read the book, is an acronym. It's uh, an acronym in which there's a section regarding Melchizedek. And uh, so she wants to know, Paula wants to know, whether I believe uh, that the evidence strongly points to the person of Jesus Christ as being Melchizedek. And she says, uh, thank you for more clarity and hopefully a simple answer. Uh, God bless you and your mission in expanding the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Well, the answer to Paula's question is yes. When we talk about Melchizedek, and this is often misunderstood, we are talking about a Christophany. So if you look at the Old Testament, you will find Christophanies, Theophanies, and Angelophanies. And what that means is in the Old Testament, when you see the moniker Angel of the Lord, it points to a Christophany. When the Father appears in Scripture, we call that a Theophany. And when angels, by God's creative prowess, materialize, and only God can cause that to happen, uh, demons cannot, we call those angel ophanies. So, for example, when Abraham saw the Lord and two angels, he saw a theophany and an angel ophany. But we also see Melchizedek, and Melchizedek is a Christophany. It is a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. It is worth grappling with the details and reasoning in understanding how we know Melchizedek is the person of Christ. In other words, this is an important issue, often misunderstood. And to understand it, you have to read Scripture and lie to Scripture. And when you do, you find that from an earthly perspective, Abraham was the king of Salem. Salem is a code word, as it were, to those insiders, biblical insiders for Jerusalem. This is the very region in which God called Abraham to establish a righteous nation of kings and priests. However, from a heavenly perspective, it is Melchizedek who is Salem's king. It is Melchizedek who is the king of Jerusalem. So one perspective is earthly, the other is looking at it from the vantage point of heaven. And in this sense, Scripture designates Melchizedek as king of righteousness, king of peace, and tells us that he is without father or mother, that he is without genealogy, without beginnings of days or end of life. Now, that in itself ought to clue us into the fact that we're not talking about a mere mortal. And furthermore, we see that like the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. He is our glorious and great high priest. And I love what noted biblical scholar Dr. Craig Evans has to say in this regard. He has pointed out, and I think rightly so, that all of this was unfortunately poorly understood until scholars discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls. And then all of this became crystal clear. For example, in the Melchizedek Scroll, Psalm 7 depicts Melchizedek ruling from on high as judge of the peoples. 
In Psalm 82, Melchizedek presides in the great assembly, makes judgments as the Almighty. And in Isaiah 61, the year of the Lord's favor becomes the year of Melchizedek's favor. In other words, those are parallelisms. Parallelisms that equate Melchizedek with Almighty God. So what we have here is the Dead Sea Scrolls powerfully underscoring the miraculous reality that God has preserved His Word over time. And what the Dead Sea Scrolls do in addition to this is they provide significant insight into the text of the Old Testament. Not only that, they add considerable clarity to the text of the New Testament. And I think this is one of the beautiful things that we have as a result of archaeology. We have more and more evidence that the Bible is minutely accurate that what God has given us in the text of Scripture can be trusted. Now, the reason I was interested in Paula's question is because there is a contrast to be made. Archaeology buttresses Scripture. But what happens with archaeology and the Quran? a huge problem for Muslims. Why? Because archaeology has demonstrated that the Quran is manifestly false. You know, the Quran denies the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It denies the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It confabulates biblical stories. It elevates Gnostic Gospels. And in doing so, demonstrates itself to be an untrustworthy source. Precisely the opposite is true with Scripture. Again, as Oz Guinness has well said, contrast is the mother of clarity. So just as when you contrast Muhammad and Christ, as I did on yesterday's broadcast, you see that there is an unbridgeable chasm. So too, when you start to contrast Scripture with the Quran, you find one is riddled with factual errors. The other, through archaeology, demonstrated to be manifestly true. So, Paul, a great question, an important question, Because ultimately, Melchizedek is a Christophany. It is a pre-incarnate appearance of the crystal Christ, the paragon of virtue, who is today forever in flesh. We'll be back in just a few moments with the quote of the day. Please make sure you get a copy of Muslim, where you need to know about the world's fastest growing religion. Available for those who support the ministry. Check it out at equip.org. Islam is the only significant religious system in the history of the human race with a socio-political structure of laws that mandate violence against the infidel. The current narrative is that to tell the truth in this regard is tantamount to radicalizing Muslims and exacerbating hostilities that may otherwise lie dormant. A common refrain has reverberated throughout the West, Islam is not our enemy. As well-intentioned as this mantra may be, the danger in this stance becomes clear once someone understands Islam in full. Read the new book by Hank Hanegraaff, Muslim, What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest-Growing Religion. To receive your copy as our appreciation for your financial partnership, simply call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support CRI's many outreaches, 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org. 
Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back with more answers from the Bible Answer Man. The battle for authentic Christianity has never been more intense. That's why Hank Hanegraaff has written a book called The Ostinification of American Christianity. As the title suggests, Ostinification is nothing short of the wholesale transformation of American, indeed global, Christianity. It is the prime provocateur of a seductive brand of Christianity that reduces God to a means to our ends and beckons multitudes to the table of the Master. Not for the love of the Master, but for what is on the table. You need to defend yourself and those you love against these insidious teachings. Please call today to request The Ostinification of American Christianity. It's our gift to thank you for your donation to support the Christian Research Institute and this Bible Answer Man broadcast. Call 888-7000-CRI or go online to equip.org. The Christian Research Journal is CRI's award-winning magazine, combining eye-catching design with well-researched articles to equip believers in doctrine, defense, and discernment. Here's what's in the latest issue of the Christian Research Journal. The Cohen brothers are among the most critically acclaimed film directors of our time, yet the meaning behind their movies is often veiled in mystery. This offers a clue about the Cohen's worldview. The difficulty is part of the design. Other topics include changing attitudes toward the resurrection of Jesus. Is a pro-life hermeneutic possible? How to revive a dead church? The Jewish Talmud and its use for Christian apologetics? And much more. Start your subscription to the Christian Research Journal today by calling 888-7000-CRI. 888-7000-CRI. Or subscribe online at equip.org. Dr. Eben Alexander's wildly popular near-death experience book, Proof of Heaven, assures us that no matter what we do in this life, only unconditional love and joy await us in the world to come. But our Lord warned that while the gate to hell is wide, the road to it broad, and those who enter through it are many, the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Your generous support lets Hank Hanegraaff and CRI speak out against the lies that lead to hell. In appreciation for your gift today, we'll rush you Hank's book, Afterlife, what you need to know about heaven, the hereafter, and near-death experiences, filled with answers to your questions about life after death. Call 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org now. Again, that's equip.org. For most Americans, pronouncements from our public officials that Islam is a religion of peace are impossible to reconcile with daily headlines and jarring photos of global Islamic jihadist atrocities. To help you understand the real Islam, Hank Hanegraaff would like to send you his new book, Muslim, What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest Growing Religion. Simply call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift in support of the Bible Answer Man broadcast and other life-changing outreaches of the Christian Research Institute. Call 888-7000-CRI or go online to equip.org. We now return to the Bible Answer Man broadcast and your host, Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you very much, Randy, talking about Muslim, what you need to know about the world's fastest growing religion. And in concert with that, the quote of the day comes from uh, Sergei Trifkovich, a harder name to pronounce than my own. He's a renowned historian. He's a commentator on world affairs. He's an author of a, a number of fantastic books, The Sword of the Prophet Defeating Jihad. And uh, he's also the one with whom I think this is original, that migration without assimilation is like the python swallowing its prey uh, with a long and slow digestion. The quote of the day from Sergei Trifkovich, who writes, The tragedy of September 11, 2001, 
and its aftermath have shown yet again that beliefs have consequences. The centrality of Islam to the attacks is impossible to deny. Our opinion formers, inflexible in their secular, liberal, ideological assumptions, deny it nevertheless. They do not take religion seriously. Instead of pondering the complex problem of the relationship between Islam, the West, and the rest, they assure us that no religious problems exist. Some of them at least seem to believe their own assurances so that the most unspoken character witnesses for the hastily nicknamed religion of peace and tolerance were non-Muslims. Sunday morning popular entertainers, academicians steeped in political correctitude, and, of course, politicians. Their claims about the supposedly distinction between real Islam and its violent aberrations were crudely ideological, based on, well, their simple conviction that all faiths, having equal legal privileges, must in some cases be equally good, equally true, and hence capable of celebrating all others in the spirit of tolerance. Of course, such assertions cannot change reality. A problem does exist. Islam is not only a religious doctrine, it is also a self-contained world outlook and a way of life that claims the primary allegiance of all those calling themselves Muslim. Again, the quote of the day, lengthy, but something to ponder. Because in that quote, there are some salient truths we have to wrap our minds around. The first salient truth, of course, is that what we're talking about in terms of a religious ideology is something that all Muslims subscribe to. Now, some do that in ignorance. Perhaps millions do that in ignorance. There are real, committed Muslims that honestly do not understand the life and legacy of Muhammad, that honestly think that Muhammad was a better man than Jesus Christ, who they consider only a man. Because remember, in Islam, the most egregious sin, the most unforgivable sin, is not the sin of the pagan, it is the sin of the infidel, the Christian, who considers Jesus Christ the Son of God. That is called the unforgivable sin of shirk. A sin worth killing a Christian over. And you say, well, that's pretty stark. As I've been saying over and over again, it is stark, but it is happening, a stark reality, sort of under the cover of night. In other words, it has been shrouded in darkness rather than having the glaring spotlight of journalistic integrity focused on it. So think of young girls who will not renounce their Christian faith being raped by Muslims in the Middle East, sometimes in front of their fathers or mothers. Christians being crucified, you say, well, that happened in the first century. No, it's happening today. Decapitations. In other words, beheadings. And this is why it's important for us to understand precisely how dangerous it is 
as Sergey Trifkovich points out, how dangerous it is to buy into an ideological mantra and how necessary it is for us to understand that Christianity is being systematically uprooted. I mean, we can't talk about this enough. There is the systematic uprooting of the Christian faith. Now, I have to admit that there is such a thing as self-inflicted wounds. Christianity decaying from within. Because we have not been communicating the gospel in the way that the gospel needs to be communicating, or communicating the Christian faith in all of its fullness, authenticity has disappeared. We've been left with a caricature. We've been gorging ourselves on a diet of fast food Christianity. And as a result of that, you have an exodus of young people out of the church because, look, if all Christianity is is an imitation of Disney World, entertaining or amusing ourselves to death, then why not do it at Disney World rather than at a church that's trying to imitate the entertainment value of Disney World? We have lost the heart of Christianity. We have perverted Christianity from within. So we have two or three real problems that we're dealing with. We're dealing with an an onslaught of, of, of Islam that wants to upset Christianity. And again, they're succeeding in the Middle East. Think of Turkey on the uh, northern uh, uh, outskirts of the, uh, of the Levant, only 1% Christians. I think of what's happening to Christianity in Egypt, or in Lebanon, or in Syria, or in Iraq, and the list goes on. You see, Christianity is in trouble in the Middle East. So you have the onslaught of militant global Islamic jihadism. And then you have a illiberal liberalism seeking to unseat Christianity along with Islam. And a liberal liberalism that believes that Islam is a better option than Christianity and Islam is an ally in unseating Christianity because it is Christianity that stands against all of these things that a liberal liberalism is espousing. Christianity is the fly in the ointment when it comes to transgenderism or same-sex sexuality or gender fluidity. But I want to focus for just a moment on the fact that we are self-destructing from within. The power of the gospel is a power that is not just biological, it is zoetic. And we have forgotten to partake, and now we are denuded of power. Tracy, well, she wrote me from Illinois, Argentina, Illinois. And I love what she wrote. Four blood moons were wrong. 88 reasons why the rapture will come in 1988 was wrong. The harbinger was wrong. Hal Lindsey was wrong. Y2K was wrong. Harold Camping was wrong. As a Christian, it gets discouraging that those who say they are Christians continue to fall for such newspaper theology. Now there's the nonsensical theory about 
the two eclipses over America, seven years apart being the coming tribulation. And so Tracy, exasperated, says he will come back when he comes back. Quit giving the lost of the world reasons to disbelieve the gospel, please. And she's absolutely right. If we're wrong about all of these things, and this is considered to be, well, at least the hype of Christianity, if we're wrong about this, well, we're probably wrong about the prophecies that we find in the Bible, and we're probably wrong about the Bible itself, and we're probably wrong about Jesus Christ, and therefore, if we're wrong about all of those things, why not find other solutions? So good for you, Tracy. It's a message I have been uh, talking about on this show for a long, long time. It's time for us to wake up. We are in serious trouble, and I'm going to continue sounding the alarm. The antidote in Muslim, what you need to know about the world's fastest growing religion is not only outlining the problem, it is outlining the solution in this anything but Christian moment. The book, the audiobook, available in its various forms, personalized, autographed. Check it out on the web at equip.org. A hundred percent of the proceeds go to support this ministry. So all this month, an opportunity uh, to make your resources transfer, uh, transform lives around the world. Thank you for those that are already standing with us shoulder to shoulder in the battle for life and truth. I'll be right back here tomorrow with more of the Bible Answer Men broadcast. Look forward to your calls, 888-ASK-HANK. Thank you for joining us today. Our mission at the Christian Research Institute is to equip Christians to think and to live Christianly. Did you know that the Quran and the Hadith are full of commands to subjugate or kill unbelievers and that Sharia mandates proactive and perpetual war against Jews and Christians? In appreciation for your gift to help strengthen and expand the life-changing outreaches of CRI, Hank Hanegraaff would like to send you his new book, Muslim, What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest Growing Religion. Simply call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support CRI's life-changing outreaches. 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org. You can also write CRI at Post Office Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28271. The Bible Answer Man broadcast is funded solely by listeners like you. We're on the air because life and truth matter. From the outside, Houston preacher Joel Osteen is charming, attractive, and his teaching, well, it makes you feel good. But the truth is, Osteen preaches a seductive and highly dangerous form of Christianity that's leading millions of people astray. That's why Hank Hanegraaff has written a book called The Osteenification of American Christianity. And it's why you must get your own copy today. You must be able to defend yourself with truth about what Joel Osteen really teaches. And this important resource arms you with everything you need to do so. Please call today and request your copy of The Osteenification of American Christianity, 888-7000-CRI. It's our gift to thank you for your donation to support the Christian Research Institute and this Bible Answer Man broadcast. Call 888-7000-CRI or go online to equip.org. The Christian Research Journal is CRI's award-winning magazine, combining eye-catching design with well-researched articles to equip believers in doctrine, defense, and discernment. Here's what's in the latest issue of the Christian Research Journal. Recent scholarly research has been significantly more open toward Jesus' healing the sick, his empty tomb, and even his post-resurrection appearances. So why have these same critics not fallen to their knees and proclaimed, My Lord and my God? Other topics include the Jewish Talmud and its use for Christian apologetics. 
apologetics, Jean-Paul Sartre and the resurgence of existentialism, defending the biblical view of human sexuality using an effective Socratic question approach, and much more. Start your subscription to the Christian Research Journal today by calling 888-7000-CRI, 888-7000-CRI, or subscribe online at equip.org. 